Yo, 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 it's your boy Bernard, and welcome to another episode of the Ink Blur Podcast, where I'll be discussing everything nerdy that has caught my eye over the past week. So let's get into it. So last week, NYCC was happening, and there was a lot of stuff that happened, and some of it was kind of awkward. Um, One of the main awkward things was the... Motherfucker. Was the uh, Spider-Man panel, where basically everyone decided to give their grievances to um, the creative team and um, editors of Spider-Man. If you've been living on the rock or if you just don't read comics, uh, people have not been liking the direction that the Spider-Man series has been going since um, Zeb Wells has taken over. So the panel was hosted by Nick Lowe, who is the editor of basically everything Spider-Man, uh, Jordan D. White, Joe Kelly, and Al Ewing. But Dan Slott was also supposed to be there, but he couldn't make it due to the fact that he caught COVID. There was a breakdown that I saw on Reddit, and Nick Lowe just decided to open the floor for questions about, you know, what's happening in Spider-Man or the feature of Spider-Man comics. And the first thing that somebody brought up was the misogynistic uh, treatment of female characters in the Spider-Man uh, book. Peter basically, you know, having this weird relationship with MJ and her new boyfriend and basically killing Miss Marvel in that book. And Nick, he basically disagreed with the pr premise of the question and he clarified that Kamala Khan was a big part of the book and the story. <laughs> and then somebody, I guess, yo, whoever this person was, they came ready for war. They're like, yo, she only appeared in 25 panels. Stop the cap. Throughout the however many issues she appeared in. So Nick was like, yeah, whatever. Thank you. Next question. And then um, somebody got up and said, yo, y'all going to kill any dude characters that way too? Or y'all just going to like have Miss Marvel make the noble sacrifice or whatever? And <laughs> Nick said, yo. We kill male characters in Marvel all the time. And the guy said, outside of their own comic, because keep in mind, well, before, um, like, what, three, four months ago, Miss Marvel didn't have a book, so she was just showing up in Spider-Man. So the person said, outside their own book. And it, it was just, it was just very awkward. So, and the thing that a lot of people don't get, people don't um writers don't necessarily get to flesh out their stories per se they'll give like a brief rundown of what they want to do with the book and then the editor decides what editor basically has final say so and what you can do and what you can't do or what they want you to do so for all we know maybe zeb wells didn't want to kill miss marvel in that book but i mean i don't know but we also did get some news that Justina Ireland will be writing Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to be. Um, if it's just for like an arc or what. But she's going to be taking over in January with issue 66. Uh, so Justina Ireland will be writing. And Drina uh, Brocardo will be drawing. Alright, let's get into the rest of it. Apparently there's going to be an Ultraman trading card game. So I, I saw that and I'm like, okay, cool. Those might be nice cards to collect, but I will more than likely not play it because I don't do card games. For those of you who are fans of Star Trek um, Discovery, the Michelle Yeoh movie, Star Trek 30, uh, Section 31, finally has a release uh, window. Uh, I believe it's a release date, actually. So yeah, this will be coming to Paramount Plus on January 24th. So, you have more than enough time to watch Star Trek Discovery. I might finally get around to watching it. I don't know, but I'm more than likely lying because I'll be trying to catch up with shit and I never go around to it. Like, I said, I was going to start a Dexter rewatch before um, the new series starts. I believe it starts in December and I ain't got, you know, a month and a half to watch six seasons of Dexter then, you know, Dexter New Blood. Uh, Magic the Gathering, they're getting, they're getting out of their traditional 
a bag and they're leaning more into other things so like earlier this year or was it last year they did um some doctor who cards now they're doing final fantasy and marvel cards so these actually look fire once again don't play card games but these would look nice enough to collect hasbro so as i told you guys before hasbro i'm not going in on them this week you know that was all last week because the auction and everything and oh yeah um uh, fuck you, quote unquote. Uh, fuck you, toxic, quote unquote, fans who decided to just screw with Hunter Dino and um, get her costume up to sixty-two um, fifty. So six thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Wow. Everybody else's has not been bid on. But so Hasbro has announced their new Haslab. So the new Haslab is going to be the Ecto One. They're going to be doing two versions of the Ecto One. There's going to be the base model, which is um, um, 325, and then there's going to be the deluxe Ecto model that is 400. So these bad boys are roughly two and a half feet um, long. I believe the deluxe version is just the car itself. I mean, not the deluxe version. The um, the base version is just the car itself, while the deluxe version comes with. Um, two different types of hood attachments so your standard hood with the ghost trap on it and the other one with like the weird satellite thing uh different hubcaps uh s s little uh ghostbusters i don't think they can fit in the car they're just props to put out they all come with their own um individual proton packs um two sets of it looks like ghost traps a stretcher um slimer and i don't know what ghost that is honestly it's not Gozer and it's not um I almost said the Metrovinian. Um I don't know it's the old lady ghost from the first Ghostbusters. And like those two ghosts apparently glow on, glow in the dark. So uh you can go to I believe Hasbro Pulse.com if you wanna get into this um crowdfund. So yeah, there there was that and I'm just like I like Ghostbusters but I don't need any more um, <coughs> cars that are just going to go into storage. So I will not be participating in that. We also got some news on Cobra, not Cobra Kai, on Karate Kid Legends. Like I said before, Ben Wang, who was on American Born Chinese on Disney Plus, plays Lee Fong, who is a new student that somehow learns martial arts from Daniel LaRusso and Mr. Han. So I'm trying to remember who else. Um, okay, so um, Joshua Jackson's in this movie, Shanette, uh, Renee Wilson, Ming Nan Wen, Armist Knight, uh, Sadie Stanley, Wyatt Olaf, and Jennifer Lynn Christie. I believe that they said that this will be taking uh, this is actually in continuity with Cobra Kai, so it will be um, following up where I guess the final five episodes of Cobra Kai um, leave us. So, yeah, it looks like he is going to be taking both Kung Fu and Karate because one of the taglines of the movie is two branches, one tree. So, hopefully the trailer drops soon. I don't like the... F this is the thing I hate about MICC. They show everyone these trailers, people record them, and post them online. And then they flag people's YouTube pages and get them removed. How about after NYCC, SDCC, all these other cons where you show all these people this stuff, you actually post the trailers on your own damn social media. Because, hey, it's the weekend and, you know, first dibs are pretty much over. So let everybody else see it. So what? Probably have to wait till the Super Bowl for a uh, Karate Kid Legends trailer. There was actually an announcement for a new Wolfman movie. This will, um, this is not set in the universal universe, dark universe, as what 2020's Invisible Man was set in. So, yeah, this is directed by Lee Wano. I mean, it actually looks good. Um, it's also, um, produced by Scott Derrickson, who did the Black Phone, he also did, um, Doctor Strange. It, like I said, it looks good. Like this, it's just weird because this is a universal monster, but it's not like um, 
connected to like I I thought they were gonna do like a whole connected universe of monsters and everything, because Lee Wano also directed The Invisible Man. Like I said, they're they're just doing their own things, and the release date for this is January seventeenth. So I would definitely be checking this out. Um, Christopher Abbott, who was in Poor Things, plays the lead character where he has to a rural home in Oregon. He grew up, and when he inherits it from his uh presumed dead father, and he's desperate to save his marriage. He convinces his wife, um, who was played by Julie Garner, who was in Fantastic Four. I'm like, I know that name from somewhere. To bring their young daughter for a visit. And once they arrive, um, according to the film synopsis, the, fa the family is attacked by an unseen animal. And in a desperate escape, barricade themselves inside the home as the creature prowls the perimeter. As the night stretches on, um, Abbott's character, Blake, begins to behave strangely, transforming into something unrecognizable. And his wife, Charlotte, will be forced to decide whether the terror within their house is more lethal than the danger without. But, I mean, obviously, there's going to be a full moon. Because that's how werewolves change in most lore. So, yeah, can't wait to check this out. I will be posting the trailer on the socials um, everywhere but... Um, Twitter, because you know you got you got to pay Elon twelve dollars to post more than a minute, and this trailer is two minutes and forty five seconds long. Um, they showed some more footage for um, uh, Batman Ninja versus Justice League. Like I said, I have no interest in this movie. Yeah, because it was originally called Batman Ninja versus Yakuza League. Kochi Yama uh, Dara will be returning as the voice of Batman. Uh, Romy Park will be doing the voice of Wonder Woman. Uh, Nobuyuki Hiyama will be the Flash. Anya Sakura will be Green Lantern. Akio Atsuka will be Aquaman. And they have not yet revealed the English cast, but this will be on um, release next year. No actual like date. It just says it'll be released in 2025. So that was that. Trying to think, what else did I see that caught my eye? I talked about the Magic the Gathering cards. Uh, we got another trailer for the uh, uh, Creature Commandos. You guys can check that one out. It can't, like I said, uh, this will be out on December 5th. Let's see what DC actually brought to the table. So, uh, DC has actually, like, DC had their own panel just like related to the comics and everything. We are getting a Peacemaker tie-in comic to the series. It's called Peacemaker Presents the Vigilante Eagle Eagly Double Feature. So Tim Seeley, who is actually one of my he's not he's I don't think he's in my top ten. He's in my top twenty um writers and Mitch Gerard uh will be writing and drawing. Um it's a five issue miniseries, it's supposed to be coming up sometime next year. Okay, we're getting a sequel to the Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong um, comic that came out last year, and it's obviously called Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong Two. Uh, once again, written by Brian Buccioletto and drawn by Christian Ducey. Um, the sequel sees the Justice League hop over the MonsterVerse when they learn that some of their villains, so Lex, Lex Luthor, Chitara, uh, not Chitara, that's a uh, Thundercats. Uh, protagonist um cheetah and harley have decided to weaponize titans like Ghidorah and rodan the absolute universe from dc is getting a lot bigger um i'm going to do a review on all three issue ones of absolute batman wonder woman and superman when superman comes out because wonder woman came out this past wednesday and it was good but they announced that Absolute Flash will be coming out, uh, written by Jeff Lemire and drawn by Nick Robles. Also, Absolute Green Lantern will be written by Al Ewing, Al Ewing and drawn by Chahoni Lindsay. And an Absolute Martian Manhunter from Dennis Camp and Javier Rodriguez. Um, I like Javier Rodriguez. Um, I've never, I don't think I've read anything um, written by Dennis Camp, but I do not like the design on the Absolute um, Green Lantern. And one of the things that also came out, we are getting Batman Hush 2. So if you've never read Hush, don't watch the movie. I highly recommend reading the comic because Hush was one of those um, 
comics that more or less changed the mythos of Batman. It's written by one of my favorite writers, um, Jeff Loeb, who um, who wrote Batman Superman uh, at DC like in the early 2000s and brought in a um, revised version of Supergirl because she wasn't around in DC. Like Kara Zor-El wasn't around um, for like 20 years at that point because she had died in crisis so on Infinite Earths. Um, but yeah, Jeff Lowe also worked on Smallville. And this is once again drawn by DC. So this is supposed to be starting in March uh, of next year. With uh, Batman issue 158. And Vertigo is back. So Vertigo is the imprint at DC where basically they, um, they let writers and artists basically push their creator own comics like i don't know why they shuttered this a few years ago but they announced that it's back so like dc gets a small percentage of the uh profits from this but a lot of the the majority of the money goes to the creators on this because it's their stuff they're not doing dc stuff uh i think that might have been it for dc i mean for um Oh wait, no, I forgot the the big news. So we finally got a release date for Daredevil: Born Again, and it is going to be March fourth. So, um, they filmed uh, the first two seasons back to back. I believe each season is going to be nine episodes, so eighteen episodes all together. And this is the first like action slash drama series that disney plus has done that has nine episodes in a season everything else has usually been like you know a half hour comedy sitcom type situation so wandavision agatha all along i think echo was seven episodes it was seven or six i don't remember but this is legit the first series like to have nine because falcon and winter soldier was six miss marvel was six moon knight was six um she hoped it was nine because that was a sitcom. But yeah, can't wait. I just, we need to hurry up, give us a trailer already, okay? But yeah, March 4th. I wish you could save it to your queue right now, but you can't. All right, so we actually got um, some more TV news, just like off the back of Daredevil. Mike Flanagan, you know, the guy who's basically the king of horror at the moment. He's got all the shows on Netflix, um, Haunting of Hill House. I'm going to his filmography real quick. Midnight Masters, The Fall of the House of Usher, Haunting at Bly Manor, Midnight Club, Doctor Sleep. Yeah, he's going to be working on a Carrie TV series, guys, for uh, Amazon. So, you know, I think the last time we got anything Carrie related was 11 years ago, and that was the um, the remake that starred Chloe Grace Moretz and uh, Juliet Moore. Wasn't Ansel, Inger, um, Ansel Elgert in that movie as well? I'm looking this up real quick. So, Carrie 2013 had Chloe Grace Moretz, Julianne Moore, I forgot Judy Greer was in it, um, Portia Doubleday, yeah, Ansel, El Ansel Elgort um, from uh, Baby Driver. He was in Baby Driver, right? What the fuck was Ansel El Am I getting him mixed up with, um, what is the name of the, no, he wasn't Baby Driver. I was getting him mixed up with, um, what's the old boy's name, um, if I'm ready, Ty Sheridan. I believe this is actually um, the well, no, the other one was a made-for-TV movie. But yeah, so they announced that Flanagan will be producing. I guess he has a very good relationship with uh, Stephen King because he did, like I said, Doctor Sleep. Um, he and he also did Gerald's Game. And he's been working like on a new version of the Dark Tower since everyone didn't like the movie with Matthew McConaughey and Idris Elba. That was that. Um, what is my next story? So there's a lot of TV shows that are be uh, or books that are being adapted into TV shows. So this is one I've never heard of, uh, Spell Singer. This is being adapted by Chad Stahelski, who, as we all know, was a stuntman who worked on The Crow, and also the director of John Wick. Uh, Spell Singer is a series of novels written by Sebastian de Castile. Um, I'm on his website right now. So it's a six book series. 
And it says Spellbringer is a young fantasy adult series bursting with tricks, traps, magic, and a talking squirrel cat. What's a squirrel cat? Anyway, uh, Stahelski, um, in his 8711 Entertainment, will be producing the film. Somebody named M. Raven Metzner, who will serve as who who will be serving as the showrunner. Oh God, he worked on Elektra. Um, but he also worked on Star Trek Discovery, Sleepy Hollow, and Clue. Is there like a new Clue? Or is this the old Clue? I'm looking this up real quick. There had to be a new Clue or something, because this guy don't look like he don't look like old. Oh, he was also the showrunner for season two of uh, Iron Fist. So I'm glad that they actually got Scott Buck out there. So he worked on something called What About Brian? Life is Wild. Oh, there was a uh, a mini series that aired on um, it was the Hub. What was um the Hub was like that channel that Hasbro had. I don't even think it exists anymore. Uh, it was uh, like part of the Discovery Channel or Discovery Kids or something like that. So that's what he worked on. He worked on Fallen Skies, like I said, um, Sleepy Hollow, uh, Heroes Reborn, Iron Fist, Star Trek Discovery, something called East West. Is that like based off the comic? Something called Dinner Party. So yeah, I mean, there isn't much on that. Uh, but they did say it will be a one-hour action adventure series based on a young adult novels by the Castell. The six-book series is complete. And there is a prequel series that begins with The Way of our Ghosty. So Spellsinger follows the adventures of a 16-year-old kid named Kellen who lives in a world where magic is everything. The problem is he doesn't have any. So he's a squib. Yeah, whenever this comes out in... Hopefully it's on a streaming platform that I have. I'll check it out. I mean, it sounds entertaining. It's kind of like, um, sounds like sky high a little bit. You know, you go to a school with superpowers and you're the only one without them. <clears throat> all right, so this is all speculation and hearsay, but I trust the source. This isn't that full Daniel RPK, so. Apparently, Disney is supposed to be making a major AI initiative um, announcement that says that the studio will focus on tech efforts on post-production and VFX. So they said that um, this is from the wrap. They said that the initiative is said to involve hundreds of people at the company and will focus primarily on post-production and VFX. One of the individuals said that it would also involve parks and experiences, but not customer facing. So. Uh, a spokesperson from Disney actually declined to confirm if any of this was true, but the rap said that they got this news from a company insider and, you know, um, they're going the same way as Lionsgate. And honestly, I can see that because once one movie company like starts to dip into AI and get involved in it, everyone else starts to follow suit. So I can see that. And like I said, I have no problem with people using AI to actually help enhance their work. I just don't like people using AI to actually do said work. So like all the Photoshop photos, uh, I mean like all the AI generated photos, um, AI generated scripts, things like that. Like you can, I, I like use it to proofread read and stuff like that. Like I started, I think I already said this, I use chat GPT every now and then to um, help me write something out or like update my resume. So good omens. I've never watched the show. I like David Tennant. I like David Tennant. I like um, Martin Sheen. Just never got into the show. But there has been an update on the third and final season. There will not be a third and final season. I'm sorry. I meant Michael Sheen, not Martin Sheen. I'm getting him mixed up with uh, Michael Shannon. No, Martin Sheen is Charlie Sheen's dad. Um, so yeah, they said that the third season will not be happening. But instead, it will be a 90-minute like movie. Um, this comes after Neil Gaiman had exited the series um, due to allegations that were made against him by a lot of women, apparently. It's supposed to be filming next year in Scotland after pre-production was paused due to all of the allegations against Neil Gaiman. So I'm not sure if he's going to be working on Sandman Seasons 2. Why does it feel like Sandman came out like four years ago? It's probably over Netflix. But, you know, for those of you who are fans of Good Omens, it's also rumored that 
it might not come out until 2026. So, since filming is supposed to begin sometime early 2025, I mean, you never know. You might get it around Christmas time. But, eh. What can you do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, though. I'm going to take a break. Dubby ad. You know how it goes. See you in a minute. This episode is brought to you by Dubby. Dubby gives you focus and energy without the crash and jitters. It has no sugar, fillers, or artificial dyes. Mix one packet or scoop into eight or 12 ounces of water. Stir or shake well. Some powderiness is normal, and it has all the important vitamins. So this has vitamin C, B3, B6, and B12. And it's made from coffee fruit extract. So drink it and go conquer a task and go to debbie.gg and use my promo code angryblur10 at checkout to save 10% on your order. That's dubby.gg with promo code angryblur10. I'm back. So, let's get into some movie news. These are small stories that don't necessarily have a lot of news to them, but they have slowly been coming out over the course of the past few days. Spider-Man 4 officially has a release date of July 24th, 2026. As I told you guys before, Tom Holland is very excited about this movie. Happy Gilmore 2. Loco, don't text me about this, but one of my favorite rappers has joined the cast of the film and Kid Cudi is in Happy Gilmore 2. So I wonder who he's going to play. Is he going to be playing himself like Bob Barker or what? He's going to be playing like one of Happy's friends. I mean, who knows? The Star Wars movie uh, based around Rey is in disarray. So, Stephen Knight has left the film. Uh, he's the second writer. So, Stephen Knight is the second writer to um, leave the film. Because uh, he replaced uh, Damon Lindoff and Justin Britt Gibson back in March of last year. I mean, I don't know what's, what's going on. Like, Star Wars is... <sighs> Star Wars might just be like Power Rangers. It just might be dead. I mean, I don't know. I, d I really don't know. I mean, I feel like this is just not going to uh, work out for everyone. But on the Predator news, we got some news for, you know, um, two Predator movies. Because we already knew about Predator Badlands. But apparently we're supposed to be getting a s another Predator movie uh, in 2025 as well. I mean, I would love to see uh, Predator come to theaters because Prey was good and it's just like I believe Dan um, Trachtenberg is doing the second uh, Predator movie that they announced uh, but let's just go ahead and get into it okay November 7, 2025 is when Predator Bla Badlands is coming out but everyone's like hold on a second there was supposed to be another movie that was supposed to be coming out on November 2nd 2025 and that was Blade so Bad news, guys. Blade has been delayed indefinitely, okay? Don't know why, but I ha I'm going to um, give you guys a whole rundown on the entire history of uh, Blade. But yeah, so they removed Blade from the 2025 release schedule, and Disney put Predator Badlands there instead. But they also announced that three other Marvel movies will be coming out um, on the schedule for 2028 and that's February 18th 2028 and May 5th 2028 and November 10th 2028 so who knows those might be sequels to movies that are coming out next year one of those movies could be Blade but I don't know it's just like I'm just, I was just looking at this and I was just thinking about what Wesley Snet said in Deadpool and Wolverine is there only one Blade is there ever only going to be one Blade and honestly, that might be the title of the episode. Is there only one blade? But I really hope that Mahershala Ali got a pay or play contract. So that basically means, hey, um, we're either going to do this movie or if we don't do it, you still have to pay me because now you're just taking up my time. But yeah, I mean, this is just crazy. Like this movie, you know, actually did a whole timeline for Blade. Let's let's just get into the the Blade for our timeline. So July uh, July 2019, uh, Mahershala Ali is announced to star in the upcoming Blade movie at SDCC. He puts on the Blade hat and poses with Kevin Feige. All right, 
February 2021, Hollywood Reporter reported that the studio has spent more than six months meeting with writers, consulting Mahershala Ali, and choosing Osei Kufar on to write the project. July 2021, Bassam Tariq is signed on to direct the movie. November 5th, 2021, Mahershala Ali makes his cameo appearance in the post credit scenes of Eternals. I'm going to splice that here. I do not care. Sure you're ready for that, Mr. Whitman? Splice that here. I do not care about the copyright warning or whatever. Same thing with the, there's only one blade. There's only going to be one blade. September 22nd of this year, Bassan Tariq leaves the project shortly um, before the scheduled shooting of November of um, 2021. Before the shooting was supposed to start that year, Marvel says that his departure was due to a quote-unquote um, continued shifts in the production schedule. However, rumors support otherwise that it was creative differences. November 2022, Jan Demars signs on after Tariq departs. Also at the time, Michael Starberry is brought in to write a new script. April 2023, Mia Goth is rumored to be playing the villain who was supposed to be Lilith, mother of the vampires. Um... And then the film gets a new writer with Zach uh, Pazaluda. November 2023, Variety the part publishes an article detailing the the variety, the variety of problems that Marvel Studios is facing. Among them is issues with Blaze Production, and that the article also mentioned that Michael Green had been hired to write the script from scratch. Again, and then June 2024, the movie gets another writer with Eric Pearson. So now Eric Pearson is the fifth writer on this movie. July 2024. Deadpool and Wolverine premieres. Obviously, we get the joke. There's only been one blade. There's only ever gonna be one blade. October 2024. The film's release is delayed indefinitely. So I don't know what's going on with Blade. Like Wesley, I got I gotta check Wesley's Twitter, see if he's been making some more jokes. I remember when Jan Damage uh stepped off the film. He was like, yo, y'all ain't got the secret sauce. So I'm going to go to his Twitter real quick. Let's see if he um has said anything crazy. All right, Wesley Snipes. Um, no, he hasn't posted since October 12th. And um, that's when he wished Hugh Jackman a happy birthday. So, yeah, no. no he, he hasn't said anything. But, yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully Mahershala Ali has a pay or play schedule, uh, contract. Let me see how old Mahershala is. Oh, guys, sorry. I will not be reviewing um, Mr. Crockett. I just haven't had time to watch it. Uh, he's 50 at the moment. So, he was 45 when he was announced to be playing Blade. But, yeah, I mean, he is literally the age that Robert Downey Jr. retired from playing Tony Stark. Or did Downey retire at 55? Because he's 59 now. So, yeah, he was 54. My fault. Because Endgame came out in 2019. Uh, seems like we aren't getting the Blade movie, guys. But I will tell you what we are getting. We are getting our, what, third wave? Is it third third wave? Uh, Disney Plus series coming to physical media. So, they announced that season three of The Mandalorian, Ahsoka, season one of Hawkeye, and season two of Loki will all be coming out on Blu-ray and 4K UHD Blu-ray. But I will tell you the bonus features on every uh, Blu-ray. So The Mandalorian season three, it has a featurette called Honoring the Magistrate, a tribute to Carl Weathers. John Favreau and Dave Filoni paid tribute to Carl Weathers, the unforgettable talent behind Grief Krieger. Uh, Galactic Legacy Creatures of Droids of the Mandalorian Discover the secrets of Season 3's memorable creatures which, And droids with the artists who bring them to life Forging the covered uh, Part 3 John Favreau, Dave Filoni And the filmmakers explore expanding the world Of Season 3's Mandalorian Wars Ahsoka bonus features Ahsoka Legacy joined the cast and crew For a look at developing Ahsoka's live action series Path of the Apprentice 
follow the dynamic of Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka within the world between worlds. Goes to the past, go deep with a spotlight on Ahsoka's allies, Sabine, Hera, Ezra, and Chopper. Darkness Rising, uncover the secrets of Ahsoka's foes. Uh, Hawkeye bonus features, a tale of two Hawkeyes. Discover how the cast and crew extended the Hawkeye legacy, bringing together Clint Barton and the new character Kate Bishop. Gag reel, um, several deleted scenes, one's called Follow the Trail, uh, another one's at the stake, um, burning of the suit, Kate's first day at work, ice cream, detour, friends, you never miss, Moira comes home, old friend, sorry, until it's done, in Boomerang. All right, Loki season two, bonus featurettes, Loki through time, travel through a decade of Loki's timeline with Tom Hiddleston, Kevin Feige, and more as they dive deep into the villainous yet lovable characters fans can't get enough of in, Loki, in the Loki series. A gag reel, deleted extended scenes, um, one's called What Would You Like? Um, and that basically shows um, the extension of Sylvie going to the McDonald's in 1982. Uh, the key lime pie scene, which is an extended scene, a uh, roll call list off uh, Loki names off all the people who have spoken ill of him in the past, including a few recognizable names, and Mobius tries to comfort him. Um, assembled the making of Loki season two. Oh, okay, um, these actually go up for pre order on Halloween, and they will all be released on December 3rd. So I will definitely be getting Hawkeye. Don't know about Loki because I can't get season one because it's sold out, unfortunately. God of War, I think I told you guys like last week that the series was uh, lost its head showrunner or writer or something like that. But Ronald D. Moore will be taking over as showrunner for this series. So he has worked on shows such as For All Mankind on Apple TV Plus, Outlander on Stars, and Battlestar Galactica. So he has been boarded um, to this show as a writer, producer, and showrunner. So yeah, apparently... Amazon wanted to go in a whole new direction and that's why the original um, showrunners and executive producers left So that's just crazy because they worked on the show for two and a half years and they're like nah, this ain't it She sounds like blade honestly, so I got my next story Then we're going to go into the reviews. I don't know why Some people just say things just to say them because it's like bro you I don't think this is true so, John Turturro was uh, speaking to Variety, and he was talking about why he didn't return to his role as Carmine Falcone for The Penguin. Because the showrunner of The Penguin, Lauren LaFranc, said that Turturro didn't return due to scheduling conflicts. So, Turturro said, I did what I wanted in the role, and in the show, there was lots of violence towards women, and that's not my thing. <laughs> So Lauren LaFlanc, like I said, who is the showrunner of The Penguin, said that uh, she was under the impression that it was all scheduling, but still respects his decision. She said, I completely respect an actor who doesn't want to take on a role for whatever their personal reasons. I only want people to join our show who are excited and want to further the story we're trying to tell. I think Mark Strong really did a fantastic job. He made the character his own and really honored what John Turturro did. So, you know, when this came out, I like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who watched the penguin i mean who watched the batman and said yo john you full of shit do you not recall in the batman that you killed selena's mother and attempted to kill selena you don't think this hurts me My own flesh and blood, huh? You made me do this. Just like your mother. That was you. So, like, perfect example. Um. Carmine in the movie kills Selena's mother and does try to actively kill Selena. And he also kills Anika, who is Selena's friend. I think it's established in Matt Reeves and I, oh, this is um, Lauren LaFrance. I think it's been established in Matt Reeves and I, 
on agreement that this Carmine is a very violent man and has a vi very violent streak against women. But yeah, it's just like, oh, your character tried to kill your daughter. And now you don't want to come back. I'm pretty sure you saw that in the script when you signed on. And if you didn't, when you got to that part in the script, you could have signed off. But it's just like, I'm sick and tired of the, um, the, um, the self-righteous bullshit that these actors come up with for not reprising a role or something like that. If you didn't like the pay, just say that. But don't say, oh, you know, it's because, you know, um, the character's abusive towards women. Nigga, we saw you choke Zoe Kravitz. Okay? We synced it. We synced it. Now, spoiler alert, okay? I'm getting ready to talk about the pain and um, Agatha all alone. Alright? So episode five of the penguin is titled Homecoming. And it's a very aptitude title, but this episode was directed by Helen Shaver and written by Brenna Gibson and Shay um Ogbana. Oz kidnaps uh Sal Maroney's son Taj and delivers an ultimatum to the Maroney. He's like, yo, give me back my martial rooms or I'm gonna kill your son. Alright? Uh, also while all this is going down, Oz has Victor look over his mother while Oz is meeting up with um Maroney's wife. He has a he pays off a guard to attempt to kill um Sal Maroney and Blackgate. So during the meetup with um um Sal's wife Nadia and you know the the exchange of the mushrooms and Taj, apparently Oz Douse Taj in gasoline and set him and his mother on fire, killing them. But see, this is why you know Oz is not the the kingpin penguin that we know in the comics because he doesn't think ahead. So he sets the fire, and he also sets off the um, the fire extinguishers, which basically destroyed a majority of the mushrooms. He's only got like two buckets left. Also, Sal lives. Um, from his attempted assassination, breaks out of prison. And meanwhile, with Sophia, she she calls like all like the head goons to the uh, Falcone family, Vidi, who she let live at the end of last episode. You know when she murdered her whole family, and she was like, "Yo, we're changing things up. Okay, you guys will not be pawns. You will be my partners, and we are no longer the Falcone family. We are going to be the Giganti family because my own family, my own father didn't like me." Uh, and apparently she's also joined by her psychiatrist Julian Rush who is apparently in love with her so <coughs> um BD is like nah this is a dumb move so she shoots him in the head she also meets with um Maroni and they come up with a plan to join together and build a super family because they have one common enemy Oz because Oz screwed Sophia over and Oz screwed Sal over and also killed his wife and kid. Oz is freaking out because he found out about um, Sal escaping from prison because he called him. Uh, his girlfriend, I don't know if she was really his girlfriend, but his, his gal Friday was like, nah, I'm not getting involved in this. And so now, the main reason this episode is called Homecoming is because Victor takes... Um, Francis Oz's mother to his old apartment, which was, you know, destroyed in, in the flood. And that's where they're hiding out. Oz also is like rummaging through the apartment and he finds a coin for a old like subway uh railway station. And, you know, that's where he's like, This is where we'll you know, this is gonna be our base of operations. And that's when they're like, Okay, we're gonna regrow the bliss here and everything. But I can honestly say, like, watching this episode, I'm just like Oz is just he, he don't he don't got it together. So he needs to become <laughs> you know, I was listening to a podcast and they were just like, What if, you know, he basically went full villain, like penguin villain at the end of the show, like he gets the top hat, the monocle and the umbrella. I'm like, I really hope they don't do that, but it would be funny. But I'm just like, yeah, nah, don't do that. But this episode was really good. Um, we didn't get that much Victor. But, like I said, very good episode of TV. Uh, we got three episodes of that left. And then that'll be it. 
All right, let's talk about episode seven of Agatha All Along, Death's Hand in Mine, uh, directed by Jack Schaefer, uh, written by Gia King and Cameron Squires. So, Agatha and Billy continue along the road where they come across a castle. And when they walk in, just like every other trial, they get a costume change. So, Agatha turns into the Wicked Witch of the West and Billy turns into um, Maleficent. And they are, um, the trial is tarot cards. And if you don't put the cards in the proper position, a sword will fall from the ceiling. And then, you know, this is obviously Lilia's trial. This episode is very Lilia-centric, so like we get flashbacks of her childhood, where she's getting a lesson of divination and reveals that she's been experiencing her life out of order, which is, you know, why she just randomly says things um, throughout every episode. Also, um, we catch up with uh, Lilia and um, Lilia and Jin who did not die in the last episode but they somehow end up underground and Lilia is doing her thing where she's talking out of sync so she had already told Jen that Billy is the son of the Scarlet Witch and everything that's about to happen and look for a bookshelf because that's how we're going to find out where it's the castle um, and also watch out the ceiling stuff and come around the corner they make it into the castle Lilia's trust is Glinda the Good Witch and Jen is the hag from mom the hag version of the evil queen from Snow White. Lilia completes the trial, saves them all. She sacrifices herself to take out the Salem Seven. And I was just like, um, wow. That was some good TV. There's really nothing bad I have to say about this episode. The only negative thing I have to say is I honestly wish this episode was longer because Lilia, uh, played by Patty Lapone, did her thing. And it was very awesome to see like those instances where she was talking out of sync all like come together. And like one of the last things she revealed that the thing that everybody already knew that Rio, dun dun dun, it's death. It's like if you didn't figure that out like after episode, what episode was it? Um, episode four? Um, no, episode three. I can, re I, if I can reach you, let my song teach you Alice's trial. Um, if you go back and watch that scene where Rio and Agatha are like in the uh, studio booth and she hits the mic, she says to Agatha, uh, you complete the trial, I'll collect the bodies. So, yeah, I mean, also, if you couldn't figure it out when she said that um, she has a black heart, that wasn't because of heartbreak, it's because she's literally deaf. So it's just like, I don't know. And she also stuck around for... Um, Alice's body when Alice died. So I was just like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. But hey, that's it. So guys, this is your host Bernard. I oh, almost did it. It's your boy Bernard, and that was another episode of the Angry Blur Podcast. So be sure to rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Next week, episode six of the Penguin, and then the two-part finale of Agatha All Alone. They really wanted this to end on Halloween, so there's that. Um, maybe I'll watch Mr. Crockett this coming week. Probably not. But be sure to rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok at Angry Blur Pod, all one word. I'll see y'all next week. Peace.